Kyle Bernstein, we welcome you back to Bally's Park Place here in Atlantic City, New Jersey. We come now to our main event. This, the battle for the USBA Junior Welterweight Championship. Roger Mayweather and Daryl Tyson. And Daryl Tyson comes in here tonight, all business. Daryl Tyson has come close to winning a world title twice. And this 33-year-old would like another opportunity. He's been in against the best, like Terrence Ali. Though this was one of his six losses, it shows why Tyson has been a top contender for almost a decade. His few visits to ESPN Boxing have always been good ones and exciting. Like this one in 1989 against Stanley Longstreet. And he says he knows how he can make tonight's visit just as good against Roger Mayweather. My basic thing is just staying close and try to smother the right hand, try to smother all his punches and make them work to get a good shot off. If not, then I will be tapping them inside this and that. Then two uh, punch will open up for me to land a good punch. And then if it does, I try to get them out of there. If not, then I take a 12 round decision because that's how I condition my body to go 12 rounds. Ladies and gentlemen, former two-time world champion, Roger Black Mamba May. I doubt that Roger Mayweather was a fan of the series 30-something, but he should identify with the ups and downs of those characters. First, the angst of losing his IBF world title to Rafael Pineda. It was a painful experience. But like the true upwardly mobile boxer he is, he beats guys like Jose Rivera to keep his career on the fast track. He shared some quality time with another ex-champ, Livingstone Bramble, but it ended too quickly for Livingstone, not even enough time for espresso. He lost to the busy Zach Padilla, but he was okay with that. He knew where to divert his anger in a healthy manner to his next opponent. But the plot in beating Carl Griffin seemed a bit contrived. And at 32, Roger hopes his career won't be canceled by Daryl Tyson. But that's okay. He can go box on Lifetime. I'm okay with that. So here is a look. <laughs> the editorial comment of Al Bernstein is not necessarily the opinion of his partner. Roger Mayweather, who beat Carl Griffin in his last fight, as you see, over 10 rounds. And tonight, uh, I really believe that he's going to get all he wants from this man, Daryl Tyson. We talked about Lattimore being in a last to rise situation. So, too, is Daryl Tyson. Let's talk about the auto zone keys to victory, Al. Very good, ta interesting tactics. But for Mayweather, got to strike early, especially with losing that weight. Standing outside does not want to be inside with Tyson. Be like Mike, yeah, like the other Tyson. Get in, throw the hook, bang the body, get inside. Weather the storm, the early storm, everybody gets it from Roger Mayweather. you got to get through it. USBA rules are the same as the NABF rules, so with that in mind, let's get to it with Michael Buck. Ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated, along with the undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Bud Weiser, proud to be your bud, present the featured bout of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., Chairman Jerry Gormley, Board members Gary Shaw and Al Daniels, Deputy Commissioner Lawrence Wallace, the timekeeper for this contest is Lindsey Tucker, Three physicians in attendance, Dr. Frank B. Doggett, Dr. Charles Wilson, and Dr. Howard Taylor. It is also sanctioned by the USBA. Supervisor in attendance, Walter Stone. The three judges scoring the bout are John Stewart, Joseph Pasqual, and Lynn Carter. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Valley's Park Place Casino Hotel here on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Twelve rounds of boxing for the vacant. USBA Junior Welterweight Championship. When the bell rings, the man in charge of the action referee, Joe O'Neill. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the blue trunks and weighing an even 140 pounds from Washington, D.C. 40 victories against six defeats with one draw, 20 big KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, Daryl Terrible T. Tyson. And across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner. His opponent wearing the black trunks, also weighing 140 pounds. He's fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, and brings a record of 44 victories, 28 by KO against nine defeats. He is the former two-time world champion, the Black Mamba, Roger Mayweather. Okay, we got instructions in the back. Any questions at this time? They come to see you fight, not be referee, right? Whoa, come on, Roger, shake hands. One time. Good luck, gentlemen. No doubt about who's charging this fight, is there? Talk about editorial comments. Well. <laughs> 
So here's a look at Roger Mayweather. You know, we keep using the term last to ride. And, I, and as we said earlier, I think it could be said about three of the fighters in the ring tonight. So people have said that about Roger for about the last five years, and he keeps coming back. Keeps a ride, doesn't he? Meanwhile, Daryl Tyson, as we said, uh, it really does feel that way even about himself. You know, he said, I'm 33 years old. i got to come in here and do some business, you know. And the interesting thing is he has, uh, with the exception of his last couple of fights, a draw to Bramble, the loss to Rafael Rellis, and that loss to Gonzalez, he has done business. He had a string of about 10, 12 straight wins before that. And um, all those fights com were very competitive, even in losing. Mayweather wearing the black trunks, as you can see, on the back of them. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Tyson stepping up from lightweight, and that could be significant because Roger Mayweather has uh, obviously lots of power in that right hand, and it's, it's junior welterweight pops. He's proven that. And the biggest question is, what did losing the three pounds, which is a considerable amount at this weight, take out of Roger Mayweather? I mean, is he going to feel this sense of urgency? I have to expect that he will. He's always dangerous. I mean, he is the Tommy Hearns of the lightweight division. There's that freight train right hand. And, and early in the bout, it is extremely dangerous. We saw him even in the bout. He lost to Zach Padilla. Hurt Padilla early in the bout, but Zach was able to get through it and then win by being very, very busy. Something like that scenario, except he'd not like to be hurt early, is what Tyson wants. You know, we talked earlier about Daryl Lattimore coming in to fight in Luxembourg cold and getting knocked out in the first round. Daryl Tyson isn't exactly what I would call heated up coming in here. No, he does look uh, not too much perspiration on him. His last fight against Rafael Ruelas, who is very similar in some ways in style to Roger Mayweather, a little taller. Uh, Tyson gave a very good account of himself, even in losing. Took that fight on very short notice. That was on the undercard, interestingly, of Michael Carbajal's last fight against Kim. Mayweather will give you all those angles. Now he's crafty. There's no getting around it. I mean, this guy has been in all the battles. Tyson showing him a healthy respect early in this fight. Of course, this is really not the distance from which Tyson wants to fight, but he hasn't been nailed with anything yet. You would really think that Tyson would want to take him into the later rounds, that that certainly would be in his best interest, and that, that appears to be the way he's fighting at least the first round. Tyson really trying to use the jab against Mayweather. That's the weapon you would think Mayweather would win the battle of, but when you face a jabber, if you can out-jab them, you're going to beat them. And also Tyson setting up the right and the left hook by getting that jab in. Well, this is a round of a lot of waiting on the part of Tyson, and probably in so doing, uh, he gave the round to Mayweather. End of one, and we'll be back. Number two, we talked about both men kind of sitting back and waiting. And the evidence of that from Punch Profile, only two power shots shown by each guy in round one. Everything else was a jab. And there are further evidence of what we say. Uh, Mayweather winning, uh, winning the round uh, virtually on the basis of those jabs. The second round starting off much like the first. The one thing you want to do, though, with Roger Mayweather, and this is what Tyson talked about, is make him fight every second of, of the round, of every round. That's what Zach Padilla did. Fighting this pace against Roger Mayweather, it's almost like you're waiting for him to get that right hand in. So far, he hasn't. You're also allowing him to pace himself and get into the rhythm of the fight. There was that short right hand, but it missed. Yeah, you don't really want him to be able to do that because, especially losing the three pounds, Tyson should want to work the body with you in the inside. You got to be busy on the inside. You got to muscle Roger Mayweather. There's Tyson working inside, and, and Mayweather holding. And uh, I'm surprised Joe O'Neill isn't making him get loose. 
There you go. Joe Neal with a warning to Mayweather. Well, hold him. Come on, you're free. Well, if you don't step back when Joe Neal tells you to, he's like a three out of the ring just with that backhand. Strong warning to Mayweather for holding. Roger does not want to really want to fight inside. The only fight in which we saw him fight on the inside a lot was against Livingstone Bramble. He's still holding, too, even though he's holding like a professional. Yeah. Well, that's what Tyson wants to do. And he's getting it done now. Now Daryl Tyson's doing what he's supposed to do. Even when he's being held on the inside, he is throwing punches. And he's forcing Mayweather now. You see Roger starting to work on the inside. It's not that Roger Mayweather is a bad fighter on the inside. It's just not normally his game. He can do it, but it's not his strong suit. A shoulder from Tyson, a little bit of frustration. All a part of the game. <laughs> really? That was well said. Yeah. See, now the pace and the distance between the two is what Tyson wants a little more of. And it's allowing him to win this second round so far. And again, Mayweather doing virtually nothing. I'll be very interested to see the numbers on Roger Mayweather in the second round. It kind of gives a shoulder to Roger Mayweather. Remember when Sammy Fuentes and Tony did that to Tony Martin? That's I think right. he broke his jaw. He did. And Sid Charisse didn't like it one bit. Let me say. <laughs> Roger Mayweather <laughs> with a slight edge through rounds two. And they said in Ring Magazine we were hokey. I defy them to find humor more esoteric than that, really. Well, maybe you could. Watch that shoulder. They watch boxing. Only 24 punches really thrown nice. in that second round by Roger Mayweather. That's really startling. Well, buttress is the point you made about uh, his lack of, uh, of punching. And, you know, I think for Daryl Tyson, there was some, some extracurricular activity after the round. I think the more he gets Roger Mayweather into that kind of fight, the better it is for him. Roger doesn't want to be sitting on the inside with him and holding and pushing and shoving. You can't land a big right hand from there, can you? Mayweather's fighting like he doesn't want to fight. He looks preoccupied in truth. I'm sure he'll get mad at us for saying it, like he does for everything we say, but, you know, I mean, he's a great fighter, Roger Mayweather, but in this instance, he's just, it, it's not the kind of focused kind of approach that he normally takes. And Tyson able to whack him on the inside, jab his way in and get inside pretty much when he wants. And there's no, so far, the big right hasn't been there for Roger. That doesn't say it's not going to be. But I do believe that's the only way he's going to win the fight. Yeah, because he's not that, not being that busy on the inside. And, you know, now they've forced Joe O'Neill, who probably didn't want to be this active on the inside in this fight, they've forced him to step in quickly now, or Mayweather has, because he doesn't want to let Mayweather hold the entire fight. And, and Tyson's doing his share as well. Tyson talking to Mayweather, saying, come on, come on. Roger's being a little more active now on the inside, throwing some nice combinations. And let me tell you, Tyson's not all that active either. I've seen Daryl in many fights where he's thrown more combinations and more punches. And I'm surprised also that Tyson is not throwing the left hook more. And his crowd showing its displeasure with the lack of action. Well, there has been a lack of action. And this is a tough round to judge. But it's one in which Mayweather has certainly done more than he did earlier. He's going to take it to the corner of Roger Mayweather. That, was, that round was a question of who lost it, not who won it. Roger's pretty much his own guy in here. He wants to try to kill all the punches, Roger. When you lay his light on your head here, you can just follow you. Know how you can stick an arm on the top of his head, throw the light right behind him. You can test him and hold him out for him. Next time you showboat, I'm going to take a point off. 
You understand, Roger? Right? You, you, you join good, but you got to use the jab and put them. And if you put them on the head here and hold them back, throw the right hand right to the jab. That's all. And you hold the head out, mm -hmm. you got to you put your hand out like that on it. You understand, Roger? Right? You put your hand out like that on it. And you put your hand out like that and hold the head, throw the right right under it. That's all you have to do. You understand? But pop the jab and don't try to fight this fight. We'll get to that, but when we, we, this, you, you, you're a better boxer. All you got to do is move side by side. That's why you move side by side. They want him on the outside. That's Mayweather fighting on the inside, throwing to the good left uppercut. And uh, he's got plenty to say in there. Roger doing some color commentary. <laughs> if I could listen and get some points. Just ask him. Start the fourth round. As you look at the numbers in the third round, again, underwhelming numbers on both sides. See, I ended up giving that round to Mayweather, despite uh, what the numbers show. As did I. Shows what I know. Both men getting busier here. And, you know, Tyson's not in a good position to throw that left hook. He's off to the his right a little bit too much. That's the way Livingstone Bramble was when they fought and couldn't land the punch. Padilla, on the other hand, was able to step to the left and get that punch in. I'm sure you heard Joel O'Neill stick his head in the corner of Roger Mayweather while we were eavesdropping and say, if you show up once more, I'm going to take a point away from you. Nice uppercut by Roger. I think that got Tyson's attention. Tyson's throwing a pretty good jab. And I, I think Daryl Tyson's throwing a lot more right hands than I would have expected. I would think he would have been throwing a few more left hooks in this fight. He may still. And Mayweather being a little sharper now from the outside than he was. And remember how effective Padilla was with the jab against Roger Mayweather. And they looked at the Padilla fight, the Tyson people. But as you pointed out earlier, Padilla was perpetual motion. Yeah. Yeah, he just doesn't stop. Zach Padilla just keeps throwing and throwing. And Tyson is not. Now, Tyson's off to the right. I'm telling you, you can't land the hook against Mayweather from that position. Bramble couldn't do it. See, that punch just doesn't get there. you got to step to the left. And Roger makes you do that. Good right by Tyson. Nice combination. He came back with a left underneath it also and another left hand. here to score. A couple of good flurries by Tyson, and the jab has been working for him. But Roger has thrown some good left hooks on the inside like that. Good right hand over the top by Tyson. Well, and there's a position where Ro we've seen Roger Mayweather get in huge trouble in the past in his career on the ropes. Does not fight well off the ropes. So Freddie Pendleton knocked him out that way. Zach Padilla got him in trouble there. We talked about the fact that Roger Mayweather is a pro. And you have the feeling watching this fight that what he realizes is it is not much in the tank and he's got to get as much out of it as he can. And very frankly, you have to look at him and say, even though he is showboating a bit, he's doing the job. Inside, Daryl Tyson won. Short little uppercut. And it's worked for him, worked for him in the last round, I thought, anyway. Your, your description at the end of that round, Barry, was very apt. And just in time, I might add. Yeah, before we left. Right in, didn't it? Uh, about Mayweather getting the most out of what he's got and parceling out his energy and uh, what he can do in dribs and drabs and that three pound weight loss, et cetera, is part of it. But to compound that, Tyson is letting him do that. Now he's pacing up a little bit here. Although there's punches through round four, and I thought the last round Tyson really started to move ahead and he's throwing more. It's just He's just not quite as busy as you might expect. And also remember, we're comparing it a little bit to Padilla and even Carl Griffith in the last fight. They were much busier. By the same token, Tyson may be in here with a game plan, too, and that is get him in later. Remember, this is a 12-round fight. Absolutely. He doesn't want to uh, totally uh, blow his shot. Here is uh, my scoring, which is even. And 
the, the thing about this spot that I think is interesting is the jab of Tyson, which is really working for him. He's landing it, he's using it to get on the inside. There is nothing that Mayweather is doing to keep Tyson from getting on the inside. And as long as he's right there, chances are very slim that Tyson's going to get knocked out. Nice combination there from Tyson. Excellent work on the inside. This is, hey, if you're going to pick a guy to win the inside battle, you would expect it to be Tyson. And Tyson obviously wants to be there, as you see, just keeping his chin right on the shoulder of Roger Mayweather. He's done some fine work early in this round. And all this could be a lot of wear and tear on Mayweather. And again, we remind you, he had to lose three pounds today at the weigh-in to get down to the 140-pound uh, limit. You know, all this is not super pretty, but it's getting it done now for Tyson. He's doing the grunt work on the inside, to the body, to the head, landing little shots here and there, avoiding most of what Mayweather throws right now. And by being on the inside, he's taking Mayweather's power away from him. He's not going to get hit with a big right hand from outside if you're right in there. See, that, that one missed. Now, there's one that got there. What did it do to Tyson? So far, nothing. Step back. Step back. Watch the head. And again, Joe O'Neill with a stern warning to Roger Mayweather. Watch the show. Watch the show. Yes, Headed for the end of round number five, and it could be that Daryl Tyson might have found a secret here, and that is get inside and stay there. Listen to this. The bell was going off just as it was going off. He threw a left hook and it rocked Mayweather at the end of that round. And he wobbled. Joe, Joe O'Neill kind of caught him. He wobbled back to his corner. So now we'll see what the after effect of it all is. Again, Mayweather just not throwing very many punches. He's landing what he throws, but. And he's throwing enough? so few compared to Tyson, it's going to be tough to get him this round. We, and this is the trick bag that he says we got in and everybody got in against Padilla. His point in that fight was he threw all his punches, Padilla, but a lot of them didn't land and I landed more of what I threw. And a lot of that is happening right here. Mayweather's been accurate. But as not thrown, there's a good right hand on the inside. Step back, step Roger back. looking down at us. He's talking to us. He is. He's the thing about us these days. He can beat you. I know well, that. And me. Could. That I know. Yeah, easily. He's undefeated against us. Easily. Good right, right by Mayweather. Well, that's on the outside, and that's what Roger Mayweather does, and he does it extremely well. And in this round, he also was doing well off the ropes as Tyson came in. And the part of Mayweather that people don't notice sometimes, just like they don't with Tommy Hearns, it's a good left hook to the body he has, and he's shown us that in this round. Nice comeback round for Roger Mayweather. Step back, don't make me push. And I think he sensed that he needed a big six round to get himself back into things. And so he came after Daryl Tyson. And the thing about Tyson's chin is, I saw Rafael Morales, who's a very big puncher as well, although a lightweight, uh, not a junior welterweight, whack him with some very big right hands, and Tyson did not get out of it. But now the pace of this fight, much better for Mayweather. Tyson's on the outside and getting hit with some pretty big shots in this round. Yeah, he is. Much better round for Roger Mayweather. That left hook at the end of the round may have really woken him up. Well, what's missing here is Tyson jabbing his way in and then being able to work on the inside. Step back. Step back. Don't make me push it. Considering all the circumstances, though, Roger Mayweather has come in with a pretty good idea. It's, and that is to use every trick and everything that's legitimate and even borderline legitimate. Make a three-minute round into a two-minute round if you can, and, he, and he's doing that. End of round number six, and we'll be back.
Big round six, and one thing you need to know about those 21 punches, and you saw it, a lot of them were very big punches. They were real strong punches that landed that really, really maybe rocked Daryl Tyson. Just talking to us again, uh, I have this fight here, so also do you, 57 yeah. off. There's Mayweather now landing those big rights, but Tyson getting on the ropes where Roger doesn't like the fight, and he whacked him with a couple. But Mayweather's still getting the best of it. He was talking yes. to us again in the morning. We ought to grab a stick, Mike, and jump up into the corner next time they come in here. He's been carrying on a... I can't hear what he's saying, but... Uh, no, it's probably not very interesting. I... possibly not. And in these last two rounds, Mayweather has regained control of the fight in terms of the way it's being fought. And one thing that Tyson has not been able to land is the jab. He doesn't want to take that chance too much because the right hand's coming over it from Mayweather. See, there's the double jab. And when you double jab, you're probably not going to get hit by Mayweather's right. And then you got to get inside and start working. You can't stay outside where Mayweather can measure you with the jab and then throw that right. He like that. Good right hand. But the interesting thing is, even though Roger has landed some of his A material, so to speak, Tyson hasn't gone anywhere. That was true in the fight with uh, Rafael Wallace, who, as I said, is similar to Mayweather in some respects. He landed some big shots on the outside, and Tyson was able to hang in. Mayweather has a trick that we've talked about with James Tony and some other people, turning his shoulder to you so you can't really get a good angle on him. He's done that more in recent years. And it, if you don't step to the left and in your left hook eyes, you're never going to land that left hook. And Tyson is not in a good position to throw that punch right now. Mayweather says, come on in here. Good right hand again. Well, he still brings that right pretty quickly. And an uppercut. Now, the last time Roger Mayweather got disanimated in the fight was against Carl Griffith, and he got rocked right after that. So, uh, but he won the fight. You know, he's fighting like what he is, and that is an angry fighter. Yeah, he is angry. He's hostile these days. He's had a great run in boxing, but right now he's, I mean, everything about him. In the ring, outside the ring, leading up to the fights. She has a right to be if he wants to. And, he's, and his performance has generally been pretty good, but uh, it can get in the way inside the ring also. It's another good round for Roger Mayweather, however. We come to the end of round number seven, scheduled for 12, and we'll be back. Good shot, but not exactly what he wants because it came after Mayweather had landed some very good counter punches as he came in. Another good shot from Joe O'Neill, who is clearly the strongest man in the ring. <laughs> by far. But he usually is, even if they were heavyweights, I think. He's a big lad. Here are the total numbers, and, and you know, you can say a lot about Roger Mayweather, but you cannot criticize what he's doing. And you know, the reason the number jumped up so much for him is in the last two rounds. Oh, big shot by Tyson. Left there. hand, and that pinned Mayweather against the ropes, and he hammers him with him on the right. Is Mayweather hurt, or is he just hanging in there? That's I don't, the question. I don't, I don't believe he's hurt. He's talking to some people over there, but he's been doing that the whole fight, so... Mayweather had such a good round the last two rounds that it jumped up his punch total considerably. And in fact, the uh, last round, he, he, he looked down over at uh, Logan Hobson and Bob Canobio as if to say, well, did you get those or what? <laughs> They've been looking for an assistant. Maybe he can come down here and do that. Well, it, it would appear that he feels like he can do all the jobs here at ringside, so he might as well do that too. He's getting the job done in the ring, that's for sure right now. Although, in this round, he's let Tyson pin him in there and some good counter punching by Mayweather, but Daryl Tyson has gotten some good things done too. Logan and Bob, of course, the purveyors of the numbers that you see all through the fight and uh, a big help to us needless to say and I, I have to think a big big help to viewers of top rank boxing really gives you an idea of what really is happening in that fight. Good hooks, oh my. But you know Mayweather hooking with Tyson and while he's landing big shots, I don't know if he wants a hook with Tyson. Now I'll tell you, one thing that's happening here that I kind of disagree with is it seems like Joe O'Neill is trying to make Roger Mayweather come out of that corner. Roger Mayweather has the right to sit in that corner forever if he wants and wait for the guy to come to him the counterpunch. That's what he wants to do, and if he can make Tyson come there. Tyson has to make him get out in the center of the ring there. And there he is again. He wants, obviously wants Tyson to come in. Nice uppercut. Yeah, and Mayweather's used the uppercut very effectively, and he's gone to his left hook a lot more. You know what else he does effectively is he... 
He holds, oh, and there's an out shot from Joe O'Neill. And Joe O'Neill telling Larry Hazard, you sit out. Well, I'll tell you what we got going on here. Larry has I think Larry Hazard and Joe O'Neill are getting into it. Yeah. Well, oh, that's, that's the first time I've ever seen a referee give a warning to the commissioner. And I'll tell you what, that there's no reason for Joe O'Neill to push Roger Mayweather like that. I mean, he pushed him hard. I have to say that. I'm not a big fan of referees pushing fighters around anyway. Just there to break up the action. Roger Mayweather really getting a little testy with Joe O'Neill, too. Uh, but Roger, you know, Roger came into this ring, as you said, with the kind of attitude, don't tread on me, and uh, it breeds that sometimes. A lot of human emotion here. Bro. Boy, there really is. There really is. One thing I was going to say that Roger Mayweather was doing is that when Tyson does come in, when he lures him in, Mayweather holds him off with the left hand just to give himself enough punching room with the right hand, and you got to say, that's a pro move. Yeah, and... Uh, He's keep, there's Larry Hazard, and uh, he's <laughs> saying, all right, we're, we're okay. I think Everything. what he's saying is stay away. <laughs> yeah, don't come near me. I don't want to talk to you right now. Uh, Fat ass no. So I guess they don't like Johnny. Well, now, I got to tell you something. That's inappropriate behavior. Now, like somebody who's looking for a call, you see Larry Hazard jumping up saying, come on, Joe. Like somebody who's looking for an interference call, he, he, he aided and abetted it. Roger Mayweather never saw that in all the years in boxing. And then you saw the finger pointing from Joe O'Neill to Larry Hazard. That's what I mean, who's, yeah. Who signs his checks. <laughs> ah. There is a very hostile feel all around ringside here, not to mention in the ring. It, it, you know, all joking aside, it's the kind of tension that you get, not even so much from the fight, but just from, there's a lot of emotion, emotion swirling. Yeah, here. yeah, very volatile situation. But, but we're okay with each other, right? Yeah. Fair, fair to middle. <laughs> there's the, uh, there's the, the edge I have for Roger Mayweather. Wait, and with that highlight I wrote about uh, about Roger, how we're all okay with things. I guess we're not. Yeah, it really is interesting because oddly enough, even though it is a brutal sport, you don't often find that kind of no. you know hate, if you will. And right now, it, in addition to all that, what you have is a battle in the ring in which two men are now trying to regain their position. Roger Mayweather trying to stay on the outside and do what he did and counterpunch. And Tyson now trying to work inside and doing a fairly decent job of it. That's good left hand from Tyson. And, you know, we can say all we want about him losing the pounds, and maybe he'll have to pace himself, but right now, Roger Mayweather is looking like the guy who's got something in the gas tank. Yeah, no, he absolutely is, and he's dictating the fight. There's no question about it. Tyson is doing what Mayweather wants him to do, right, for the last two, three rounds. Now Mayweather tying him up again. And, you know, it's not that Tyson isn't even in the position where he can get it done. He's on the inside. He's just not able to, to land as effectively. And Mayweather has shown a lot of power. Tyson coming up to Junior Welterweight. Maybe he's not used to getting hit with some of these power shots. And he's missed hooks like that one and gotten hit with uppercuts like that one when Mayweather's on the ropes. This is as good as Roger Mayweather has fought off the ropes in a long time. He did some of this against Padilla, but not as consistently. Who's that hard jab from Tyson? Come on, you're free now. And I'll tell you what, now, with all the bad blood that's existed, it's going to be very tough if Joan O'Neill did want to take a point away, for instance, for holding from Mayweather. Uh, it would almost be difficult to do that. Yeah, and I think Roger Mayweather knows that, to tell you the truth. There he's holding and hitting a little bit. Come on, the end of round nine. We've seen a little of everything tonight, haven't we? Mayweather using the uppercut as effectively as he has in any of his recent fights. Maybe that's the difference. Kind of a very intelligent fight. He took a right hand from Tyson there as Tyson backs him into the ropes once more. But you have a feeling that that is where Mayweather wants to be. It feels more comfortable. Super cut on the inside. Excellent punch by Mayweather. Oh, 
This is the tenth round as we look at the numbers through nine, and Mayweather's really starting to get a pretty decided edge. Well, yeah, that's pretty close though for through nine rounds, and we're only, you know, we're talking about a 30-some punch edge. Still, it is about the edge we have him a couple, two, three rounds ahead. And Mayweather fighting a very intelligent fight. Yeah, especially in the last three or four rounds, and having more in the tank than. The uh, pundits, including us, might have thought because of losing the weight and Tyson working pretty effectively early. But I also think that the fact that Tyson allowed him to be economical in the first two or three rounds is yes. serving him well now. Yeah, I agree with you. Had he pressured Mayweather in the first couple rounds as he did in some of his middle rounds. Held him and hit him there. And Roger has done what part of what Daryl Lattimore did in their first fight. Done just enough holding, just enough grabbing to make sure that the inside work of Tyson is not as effective. You know, I have to say, too, that Joe O'Neill is being more tentative now because there's no question in my mind that if that happened earlier in the fight, he'd have been all over Roger Mayweather for holding and hitting, and he just sort of said it as he separated them. Yeah, and part of it is part of it is Joe O'Neill's own fault because he was overly zealous before. Part of it is Roger Mayweather, of course, as we said, came in with just hostile attitude and it permeated the room. And so when you throw it all together, plus the beef that O'Neill had with his own commissioner, Larry Hazard, it would make anybody tentative. And in the middle of all this is old Daryl Tyson just trying to get a USBA title and a shot at another world. Make an honest living, you know? Just trying to get it done in there. He fell into uh, all my children here, one life to live. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and somewhere along the way, Roger Mayweather, either because of all that went on or just because he decided to pay attention to business, is not doing as much talking, as much showboating, just taking care of business. <laughs> I have the idea that even in victory, should he go on to win it, Roger Mayweather is not going to be a happy guy. Well, I'm sure he'll be dis he's distressed about, I'm guessing, I don't want to put words in his mouth or his thoughts in his head, but he's obviously distressed with Joe O'Neill, we sense that. Coming to the end of round number 10, this round, this is scheduled for 12, and we'll be back right after this. Oh, and now you have the feeling, well, on my card, Daryl Tyson has got to more than just get getting. I got Mayweather in front by four points in this fight. Yeah, I think I'm right in the ballpark with you there. There's the numbers. And um, not a huge edge for Mayweather, but enough to indicate that uh, he's got an edge in this bout. And uh, Daryl Tyson might very well need to knock him out or at least knock him down to, uh, to capture this bout. I break. Step back. Step back. It's been a fight that has showcased every trick in the sport of boxing. Just about. We have Tyson using his shoulder early in the bout, a lot of holding, a few other little tricks. And always holding with the offhand, which is on the other side of where Joe O'Neill is standing. Although I don't know if there is another side from where Joe O'Neill is standing. What are you doing? It's home. Come on, let's go. The, uh, the work on the inside by Daryl Tyson has really ceased to be that effective. And uh, that really is what it's boiled down to. Mayweather's been able to either punch himself or hold or do whatever he needs to and prevent good things from happening. Joe O'Neill has gotten in there to break him, but as you said, not as definitive as before. The bottom line is Mayweather has, has really utilized everything and is, and is doing a superb job. Yeah, he's come, he's come on here in the rounds that you would have thought he might have some trouble with because of the weight loss, et cetera. Now he's landing some Roger Mayweather-type right hands and maybe shaking Daryl Tyson. I think he's got Tyson a little bit hurt here. And Daryl's a, a real game competitor. He's, he showed when he fought Ruales and uh, did that fight, and he was hurt a couple times, but he, there's absolutely no quit in Daryl. And for him, 
as you mentioned, the loss here is really a tough one for Mayweather. I'm sure he'd like to see himself in a junior welterweight championship match pretty soon. And because of his credentials, I, I would think it's very likely that you will see it. In, in very possible. Well, Zach Padilla, who's got the WBO crown, the man that he had such a close fight with, would be a good one. Charles Murray's out there. A lot of guys out there. left hand and that drove Tyson into the ropes and you know the fight's going Mayweather's way when in the battle of left hooks he wins it he's just doing a great job I've given him the last five rounds and I'm going to give him this one too end of 11 we'll be back he just wouldn't leave and Joe O'Neill looks down at Larry Anderson and said look look this is what I can deal with do you blame me? And finally, he prized Roger Mayweather loose from Daryl Tyson. It's kind of like show and tell. You know, Joe O'Neill look at our heads and say, look, see what I brought to school? I'm so verklempt, I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, talk, talk amongst yourselves. Here is Roger Mayweather's punch edge, an indication that he is ahead in this spot. We both have a head. You know, it, it lost in all this, and we're trying to make sure it's not lost, is the performance of Roger Mayweather, which is excellent. And uh, just as it was against Carl Griffith, when he was rocked by Griffith, and Griffith's a, a quality junior welterweight. Um, there's my scoring. Roger Mayweather, twice now, after uh, the close loss to Padilla, has come on in bouts that were tough and could easily have gone against him, and you have to give him a lot of credit for that. Even if he doesn't want us to give him credit. And there he is again. Joe O'Neill got him a step over toe hold with Phil Nelson. And Mayweather comes out of it fighting. I have an idea if Mayweather's going to leave the ring fighting. Yeah, that's very possible. Reminder that we're running a little long speed week coming up right after we get out of here. Time to chat with Roger. I'm sure he's kind of anxious to chat with me about this fight. Huh? Maybe over coffee, maybe over espresso. Right now, he's doing a number off the ropes against Daryl Tyson, a place that traditionally he doesn't like to be, but he's doing it tonight right there. He's doing a great job. You know, you can say what you will. It's, it hasn't been a, a pretty fight by the stretch of the imagination, but Roger Mayweather has done everything that he's needed to do, and, and I believe he's going to score a lopsided win here, and, and you got to say a way to go, Roger. Yeah, put himself in position very much for a possible world title match. And Daryl Tyson fought hard in against the guy a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger puncher, and uh, couldn't quite get it done. So 45 seconds left in this fight. Unless they write Roger Mayweather off again, it looks like he's put himself in position for another junior world to a title shot. I'd love to see him fight Zach Padilla again for the WBO crown. It's a good fight. It's probably a good fight the first time. Probably not, it was. Probably not the crown Mayweather was looking for, but uh, nevertheless, it would be a very entertaining and interesting fight. Why do I have the distinct feeling that Roger Mayweather is going to come over here as soon as the bell rings? <laughs> oh, don't be, don't be so self-centered. He's probably going to go to Larry Hazard, or maybe to the punch counters, if or maybe smart. to the judges. If he's smart, he won't go anywhere near Joe O'Neill. No. End of the fight, and I also don't think he's going to go too far from Daryl Tyson. I think in the end, as you see, it's that's the way every fight ends, no matter how bitter it is during the fight itself. Well, I'm sure that Daryl Tyson earned his respect. And uh, this young man, Daryl Tyson, gave a good effort. Was in, I think, in a weight class was against a puncher that was just a little bit too big for him. And for Roger Mayweather, who, and let's let's remind people again, had to lose three pounds to, to this morning at the weigh-in to get down to 140, had plenty in the gas tank after it was over. And it, so uh, what appears to be an excellent win for a former champion. A noble warrior once it bought. We go to the scorecard. Joseph Pasquale scores about 116 to 112. He has it for Mayweather. John Stewart scores it 115 to 113 for Daryl Tyson. And Lynn Carter scores it 115 to 113 for the winner on a split decision. Daryl, terrible wow. team, Tyson. Man, that's amazing. That is wow. really amazing. I, 
I tell you what, that one stumps me. And I mean, you can say what you want about Roger Mayweather's behavior in the ring. And Daryl Tyson's a sweet man, but you know what? He flat out lost that one, pal.